Welcome to our Sociology at Work uh, Google Plus Hangout. I'm Dr. Zuleika Zavalis, the Manager of Sociology at Work. I'm an applied sociologist working in research and uh, social media. So our website and our social network Sociology at Work focuses on applied sociology, which is the use of sociological theories, methods and ideas outside of academia. Our guest today is Dr. Dan Brook who's involved in several social activism communities. We'll talk a little bit about his background and we'll also talk about how um, Dan uses sociology to carry out his social activism. And then we'll speak a little bit about how students can get involved in social activism um, communities and also how that we can use sociology to um, sociology of social activism to use our, uh, to apply our sociological imagination. So welcome Dan, thank you for being with us today. I'm happy to be here, thanks. Um, let's talk a little bit about your background, so if you could tell us a little bit about how you went from studying sociology to where you are now in your career. Sure, so um, I realized at a certain point that I wanted to teach, but it probably wasn't news to other people because I have a lot of teachers in my family. So, um, so uh, I, I started off with a with a self-designed uh, major, socio-political economy as an undergraduate, and I also then uh, for graduate school got a master's in political science, and then I moved on to sociology and got my master's and PhD in sociology. And um, the year after that, I taught English as a second language in a New York City public school, a low-income school, and it was a great experience. And um, that year, I also got married. And so the following year, my wife and I went to Bangkok, Thailand, and we taught English there part-time and had a sort of a honeymoon year together, which was lovely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Anyway, so, um, and then after, after graduate school, um, I just, you know, set it my task to try to get uh, teaching jobs, and so I did. And um, I've been uh, a part-time lecturer at a variety of schools, which has pros and cons. And, um, you know, it's sort of been serendipitous because I teach the classes that are assigned to me. I rarely get to uh, choose what I want to teach and yet it's worked out so wonderfully and I, I absolutely love what I do. So what's the, there's obviously been a strong connection between politics and sociology and that's what you're teaching at the moment and you're saying that's serendipitous. So what is the connection for you intellectually that, that brings sociology and politics together? Sure, well uh, I believe that politics, economics, and culture are um, inextricably linked, at least um, you know, in practice, if not always in theory. I don't think we have uh, one without the others. And so I just try to make those connections more explicit. So um, outside of your academic work, um, you are involved in a number of political issues um, and social causes. So some of the things that, that you work on include vegetarianism, anti-smoking awareness, global warming, the promotion of peace and advocating for an increase in living wages. Can you tell us a little bit about how you use sociology to help you raise awareness about these social and political causes? Sure. So. Um I mean, the, the short answer is that that beautiful concept we have, the sociological imagination, I try to make all sorts of connections. And um, the connections are, you know, between the micro and the macro, and we see that things happening in our little lives are connected to politics and economics and history and global phenomena. Um, it sort of puts things in perspective, and people see how they fit into the, to the puzzle and how... Uh, to use another metaphor, how they're one of the keys to unlock uh, one of the gates that we need to all march through together. I also believe that when people get involved in issues and try to address any social problem, 
that even if they can't solve the social problem, that merely the process of addressing it makes the social problem more manageable. And we find that people tend to be you know, less anxious and overwhelmed and depressed because they feel like they're at least part of the solution and no longer part of the problem because of their involvement. And on a certain level, I think that's psychological. On a certain level, I think that's spiritual. But I learned it through sociology. <laughs> Wonderful. So how do you bring in your experience as an activist back into the classroom in the way that you teach sociology? Yeah, well for me, I mean, I really love teaching, but um, in a way, you know, teaching is just another form of organizing and doing political work. And of course it doesn't hurt to have a captive audience of uh, <laughs> eager students who want to learn and experience the world and change it for the better. And I remind my students that here we are in sociology and we're lucky to be in a sociology course together. And sociology was invented not just to learn information, not just to better understand the world, not just so that we'll have, um, you know, party tricks to show off, uh, you know, to our friends, although that sometimes happens with sociology. But the whole point of sociology is to learn stuff so that we can make our society better, so that we can reform or, if necessary, revolutionary revolutionize our society. So the whole point of sociology is to bring improvement to people's lives. And I bring my experiences into the classroom and tell them what tell them some of the things that I do and connect it and the volunteering that I do and the social activism that I do. And I encourage them to do likewise. And uh, for for a course project, I give the students options and one of the options is getting involved in the community either through uh, social service, um, social advocacy, or social change, however they conceive of it, and getting involved in the community, and then writing reflection papers on it. So it becomes sort of a, an experiential learning or a service learning project where they can bring the, bring the classroom out into the wider society, but also bring the society back into the classroom. It's a dialectical relationship that never should be separated. That's wonderful. Thank you. So we've talked about your career and how you're using your sociological imagination in your activism um, and you've talked a little bit about how you encourage your students to do the same in their, uh, as they're studying. Um, what about some career advice for students? There's, this is a tumultuous time <laughs> for um, in politics in many places around the world and certainly in America. Um, what do you think are some of the major issues and opportunities facing sociology graduates in the current political climate in America? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough issue and a lot of people are concerned with it. And as sensitive as I am to those issues, I remind my students though, the purpose of education is not to get employed. Even though that's what they've been told and they're, they're um, intellectually fattened up for the market and all that kind of stuff and they want the, the quote unquote good or better job, which really means a paying job or a job that pays well. They don't actually typically mean a job that's meaningful or important or does good in the world. And so I try to tweak that. I'm explicit about that. So I say, you know, I mean, I think we should be in school because we're curious, because we want to learn, because we care about liberal arts and sociology and the world around us and our society and making it better. That said, I understand we need to work <laughs> and earn money. Um, so, ideally, a sociological education teaches us partly how to think. It teaches us not just um, information and facts, which come and go, but modes of analysis, critical thinking, um, how, how we and other pieces of society fit together. That's part of the sociological genius in our field. And if we can be good thinkers and know how to find information, know how to link to other people, know how to connect micro and meso and macro, and, and, and therefore know how to problem solve, then we can be useful in any field. And there's no field that a socio uh, sociologically trained student can't go into and be very successful at. Agreed. <laughs> so how might students become involved in social activism and how can this work help their professional growth as sociology practitioners? 
When students get involved in the community in any way, and when they get involved in activism, um, first they learn more about themselves, what they're interested in, what they're good at, they hone their skills, they learn the tricks of the trade, they also expand their social networks, they learn who's out there and they meet people and they meet people who agree with them and who disagree with them and they might meet people who they supervise or who um, supervise them and all of that I think is incredibly useful. Going out and um, you know interacting with reality so to, spe so to speak is the best way to understand reality in addition to learning about it in the classroom, um, I don't I don't remember who once said uh, you know some, the the best way to understand reality is to try to change it. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very it's a very durable illusion. <laughs> Look, I really I I like your work as you know, and um, I like that you're bringing in those practical exercises and giving that as an uh, an option for students um, because not all courses have that that focus that shows students what they can actually do and re to reflect on it I think is really important. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add about your, um, your work in activism? Well, I'm just interested in so many things, I mean really so many sub-issues because the issue is always the same. It's a, it's a better, fairer, kinder, more beautiful society. So anything that supports um, social justice and you know, anti-discrimination, ecological sustainability, you know, the more we can reduce racism, sexism, and homophobia, the better. The more we get rid of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, ageism and ableism, the better. The more we can equalize our societies and distribute education and health care, housing, food, etc., um, the better that is for all of us. So. I get involved in issues, but you know it's all under that broad area of, say, social justice. So yeah, so I, you know, I believe in raising the wage on the, the lowest, you know, uh, raising taxes on the highest, that kind of stuff. And um, I also get involved in vegetarian activism because I see that as an aspect of social justice. Um, animals are a different species, but it's how we treat each other, how we earthlings treat each other in this world, but also how it connects to personal health, public health, and planetary health, all of which I find uh, incredibly important. And likewise, then, with um, you know, the anti-smoking work I do, um, you know, similar types of issues, how it affects personal health, public health, and planetary health. Um, these are, these are the motivating issues for me, often. Thank you for your time, Dan. It's been really great um, talking with you uh, briefly, but it's been really useful. Um, again, I think some of the things that you, you've discussed, that um, sociology, as you say, it's not just about um, it's not just about education, it is about changing your, your own consciousness first and then going out into the world and changing other people's consciousness. And I really liked your message about the fact that it doesn't matter if you're involved in a particular community activity and it doesn't have straight away a tangible outcome. The idea of that we're working right. together with other people, I think that's very powerful. Yeah, I believe, I believe in um, not just going for immediate and obtainable goals, but trying in a larger way to change our culture. And I think that's the, you know, the special niche, perhaps, of sociologists. You know, we realize how important culture is. And if we can make certain cultural changes, which are not easy, it takes a lot of people and it takes a lot of time, but when we make certain cultural changes, we find that those other social and political changes that we want to achieve are much easier because um, we have that sort of widespread support for it. It seems more natural then. Well, thank you for your time and your um, your thoughts, Dan. We're going to have some links to Dan's personal website in the description box below. You can also find more links to Sociology at Work. You can find us on the web on sociologyatwork.org and our links to social media will be in the description box. So until we talk next time, colleagues, thank you to Dan and have a wonderful time. Thanks.